Hello everyone. Good evening. I hope everyone is doing great. So today we are going to learn how to map key value pair JSON in Vega. So this happens very frequently when we try to integrate with other systems. We get a uh, response like this is where they'll respond in key value pair. So if you see my JSON in this in the black one, right? So it's returning the employee details and here uh, we have the value in attribute name and attribute value. Okay, so if you see that attribute name is here employee ID and attribute value is E1234. Similarly, we have the first name and last name. Okay, and then we have few other attributes. But what happens is, okay, so this is kind of a, it's how, so when we receive in Pega, actually, if you want to display somewhere on the UI or if you want to compare or, or if you want to do anything, how we usually we want to transform that, okay, in the, if you see this one, okay, in the right side, so if you see, here we have all the same attributes. So I have mapped employee ID into our the Pega property employee ID and the similarly first name, last name, phone. So here basically key value pair is getting transformed okay, to a page. Okay, so here in the in the left side in the black one it has the page list. Okay, and in the right side we have a page and obviously when we have the page details right, so we have employee details and all the details is mapped on this one. It will be easy to handle. Okay, we we want to display somewhere we want to uh, do anything. Okay, so obviously from the page list it will be easy to handle and also it's easy to find out right. So here if in this list you always have to loop and find out. Okay, but here you can directly refer employee ID first name. So this this is a very frequently we get this kind of requirement. So now how we can do that? Okay, so I'll show you uh, a step by a step. Okay, how we can transform that. So let's go to the Pega. So the first things which I was showing is that this is the JSON which I have. Okay, and this is the JSONs which I'm going to transform that. So first thing what will happen is that we'll get these JSONs from external system. Okay, so the first things which we need to do is the parse the JSON and map it on the clipboard property. Okay, and then we need to loop and then create a page. Okay, so this is the steps which you need to follow. So let's let's recap the steps. So the first step we need to do is okay. Uh, let's say you are in a response data transform. If you want to pass this JSON, okay, so you need to write a data transform where you need to map this property, these details, this key value attribute pair on some clipboard property and this will create a page list property okay and here you don't need to create your own property okay page list property you can use out of the box there are like so many out of the box property which is there which you can use it because here we'll be using just for temporary purpose our final output is that employee page okay or employee details page on which we want to map it so the first step is uh, we'll map it on temporary page list property okay so let's see how we can do that. Okay, so for that, this in, in response data transform, or you can write it like anywhere, that's fine. So what I have done is I have created a parse um, JSON and create clipboard page. Okay, this is a UT, uh, like sorry, data transform, which I have created, okay. And here what I'm doing it, okay, so this data transform will take uh, two parameter JSON data. So basically the, the same JSON, which I was showing as a string and the execution mode. Okay. So if you go in my activity on the very first step, I'm setting the execution mode as a deserialize and, and then JSON data I'll be passing. Okay. When I'll be running. Okay. So I'll show that now in this one, what I'm doing is okay. That as I said, right, the node is the page list properties, employee details in my JSON and the key is attribute name and attribute value and I'm mapping on as I said right that you'll have so many out of the box attribute which you can leverage because this is for temporary purpose so here py response field I'm using that and on that this comes from the base class py property name and py property value so once I'll execute this one what we will be getting is all the values okay this whole entire JSONs will be mapped to py response field and and then the value will go to property uh, name and uh, property value so let's see okay what happens okay so let's run this and pass that json so here you can see that i'll trace as well and i'll show you so now if i'll run so let's see this see we can see that all details came on this clipboard page so we form this temporarily page list property okay now from this page list property because this page list property is still not a kind of a Obviously, we can use it, but everywhere we have to put a condition. So let's say if you want to find out the value of employee ID, right? So then we need to loop on this, check this PY property value, uh, PY property name, and then get the value. So each time you have to do that. Okay. So what will be the easy way? So just create a 
employee page okay from this object from page this object create a page or object and keep it on your system and you can clean this one uh, this is not required once you map it okay so now the first step we passed the JSON and created a page list structure. Okay. Now the second thing is that what we can do. Okay. So in this also now creating a page to create a page also we have a two approach. Okay. So I'll be showing a both approach. One is that you can do it like this. Okay. So see here I'm looping on this. Okay. And then I have created a two steps step 3.1 and 3.2. So here I'm checking the property name is employee ID param dot property name. So here I'm looping and keeping that on the param. So param dot property name is employee ID, then map that the value, okay, in employee ID, uh, okay. Then second, again, I'm checking the first name, okay, and then map it in first name. So let me enable that and see what's happening, okay. Let me run and show you. So let's run again. So here you can see that on employee details, we got the first name and the employee ID, okay. But still there is some problem in this approach. So this approach is fine. There is no issue. But the problem is we need to keep writing like this. Okay. And let's say today we are adding five attributes. Tomorrow we are adding another 10 attributes in this key value pair JSON. Then each time you need to come to this activity or you can like you can have your data transform as well. And you can add the steps like this. Okay. But this is like a high maintenance. Okay. So is there any way we can summarize everything in one place? Okay. And, and also, right. So see here we have employee ID first name. So someone can pass like this also. Okay. So to do everything right in one place, obviously, right. You can, you can do it like this as well. Okay. But what is the other approach? Right. So I'll show you the other approach. So for that, we can comment out 3.1 and 3.2 and let's follow that this 3.3 approach. Okay. So here what I'm doing, I'm creating a decision table and here I'll just need to initialize that. So in the decision table, I'm using primary dot employee details. So I'll just initialize that property with something. I'll say first name and just set the blank value so that that page will get initialized. Uh, otherwise I was facing some issue. It was not able to map it. So now let's open that map employee details and let's see what I'm doing. So in this one, what I have done, Sorry, uh, let's refresh and see that what I have done in this one is that I'm using px put a string. There is an out of the box function here. You can see that from this Pega rules library. So here I'm saying px put a string and my step page, you need to give this keyword and then you need to give the property name. So here employee ID, I want to map it to employee ID. The first name I want to map it to the first name. So here it's taking two parameter, the same thing. Okay. Which that the, in the activity, the step was taking property name and value. And here I'm checking the property name. Okay. So if the property name is employee ID, map that value to employee ID, uh, pick a property. Okay. If the, the, the key name is first name, then map it to the property first name. Similarly, you can see that I have done it for everything. So now in this decision table, it's little easy to maintain than the, that steps. Okay. Because let's say you are, you are having a similar 20 steps, right? So your activity or data transform will become huge and it will be tough to maintain, but here you can do that. Yeah, if required some changes, you can export and also like export as Excel and change it and upload it. Okay. And let's say, as I said, right, if these things is changing, like you can change it like this as well, instead of employee, you can, this, this works with the spaces as well. Okay. So you can do either way. So now let's run and see if this is working. So I have deactivated the other steps. Okay. Uh, 3.1 and 3.2 and here, uh, I have enabled the step three. So let's run and see if our details is getting mapped on that employee page. So see, you can see that entire details came. So basically what we did in this whole session, right? We transform this page list property. Okay. To page property. Okay. Using a two way two approach. One is like comparing each attribute value. Okay. Each at key attribute name and then setting the attribute value and then there was another approach is decision table and I'll suggest to go with the decision table approach okay because it's easy to maintain so this is it for this this class okay this is just wanted to cover okay uh, let me know if you have any doubt okay so I'll just recap what we did so the first things which we did is that we passed that key value pair JSON and map it to a, a clipboard page okay in page structure 
and then we looped it and with the two approach okay either using property set or using decision table we created that page list we transformed that page list okay temporary page list to a page property okay and, and that page property can be used in our applications so that's it thank you have a good day bye